My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I give thanks to my God in heaven for the faith given to you by the power of the Holy Spirit this day. Amen. Chapter 24 of St. Luke's Gospel is the final chapter of the book. And in many respects, the story of the two men on the road to Emmaus, followed by Jesus breathing on his disciples the Holy Spirit, is the climax to the Jesus story. Let's be clear. He has risen. He has risen indeed. And that, my dear friends, is the cry. In many respects, the text for today reminds us of that reality. These two men, the Bible tells us, on their way walking, were talking with each other about the events of Holy Week and Resurrection Sunday. That is to say, it was already everywhere in the greater Jerusalem community. It is by no mistake, I think, also, being that Jerusalem and Emmaus only being about seven miles apart, that news would have traveled across the land very quickly, especially about the resurrection of a person, in this case, Jesus. And even more so, as they were talking about this event, the Bible tells us that Jesus himself drew near them. And as he drew near them, their eyes were shut to who he was. I know for many that might seem weird, but in many respects, later on in the text, we understand why and at what point their eyes were open. But nonetheless, as we look at the story of Jesus on the road to Emmaus with the two men, we see the importance of the story of Christ and the events of Holy Week unfolding before us. Jesus inquiring to the men what they were talking about, and I find this to be really amazing. Hear what the Word of God says. Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these last days? You're foolish if you don't know what has just occurred. This man Jesus, whom we thought was the deliverer, whom we had hoped was the deliverer, was crucified, he died, he was buried, and now he's resurrected. Don't you know this, man? I can just picture them saying to Jesus on the road, to Emmaus. But my friends, this story is a continuation of many others like it that indicate and signify to us the importance of the resurrected Jesus being seen with the eyes of people, making the disciples and others witnesses to the promise of Christ now fulfilled. You see, Jesus' death and resurrection, prophesied long before, occurred physically in the, in the sight of the apostles and the disciples, and even those who walked with Jesus did not understand. They did not understand what was happening. One important aspect when looking at this account is the key aspect and reality of witnessing. Witnessing to what you hear, what you see, what you know. I mean, in our, in our society today, our witnessing goes a little like this. Did you see the news? There was many people outside the state capitol not distancing themselves six feet from each other. Did you see the beaches down in Florida where they were out there not distancing each other? That's the witnessing that we're talking about today. Did you hear about governor so-and-so who's letting somebody get their hair cut and I can't? That's the witnessing that we have in our society today. At the time of Jesus and at the time of the Emmaus story, the words that were being spoken were about this man, Jesus Christ, who had died and is now alive. The very son of God who did what he said he would do. Just as the angel said to Mary there in the tomb that morn on Easter, it's just as he said he would, that is to say, arise from death. But more than this, most of the great events in the life of the church and in the life of Christ happens around a meal. As they traveled to Emmaus, Jesus was acting as if he was continuing on, and the disciples there asked him to stay with them and eat. 
You see, eating in the church is where we, God's people, find ourselves in unity, especially around the Lord's table, where soon, I pray God, we will be able to gather once again and receive his body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. But let's just take a quick look at this. There at the Last Supper, a meal where Jesus instituted the new meal of his sacrificial body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. Great things happened. We know in other cases in the New Testament, the Sermon on the Mount, the feeding of the 5,000, where food was in the middle of the teaching of Jesus. Jesus talked all the time about being the bread of life. Jesus, in many of his stories, examples, and parables, even the great temptations of Jesus involved food. If you are so hungry, Jesus, the Son of God, you have the power, turn those rocks into the loaf of bread. Food, my friends, where the great times of the church occur, where fellowship together as brothers and sisters in Christ occurred. And as the text tells us this day, when Jesus broke bread and gave it to them, when he served them his precious body and blood, their eyes were open and Jesus went away from them. Notice what the text says as well. And I think every one of you can feel the same way about this. Did our hearts not burn when he was opening up the scriptures to us prior to this body and blood, prior to this meal that we ate? Did our hearts not burn knowing that we were in the very presence of the Son of God? Think about it. You too would feel the same way. You too would feel the same way if you were sitting at a table eating a meal and all of a sudden your eyes were opened by the Holy Spirit and you knew the one that was with you is that risen Messiah, that risen Lord that they had been talking about on the road to dinner. I mean, think about it. I had the pleasure of having a few phone calls this week with several different people. One of our members called me and, and just wanted to shoot the breeze. Just wanted to talk. As Jesus walked on the road to Emmaus, that's what was occurring. Just fellowship, talking, brotherhood. Now I have to say the two disciples were a little bit befuddled at the fact that Jesus did not know about the events of Holy Week. But nonetheless, hear the words of what the scriptures say about many. And he said, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had spoken to you. This applies to us today in the very condition that we are in. Many times throughout this entire episode of the life that we've been living for the last four or five weeks, I've had to say to people, this soon too shall pass. Have you not forgotten what the word of God says that surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age? Surely I shall not leave nor depart my people. And as Jesus walked on the road to Emmaus, with these two disciples, as their eyes were closed, the very promise was being fulfilled that Christ, the Son of God, had done what he said he would do. As you see in the epistle lesson for today, and as you hear these words from the epistle lesson, let these words be reassuring to you that you have not been purchased with perishable things such as silver or gold, Verse 19 says, but with the precious blood of Christ, like the lamb without blemish or spot. That is what the Bible tells us that the work of Christ did for you and for me. We have been purchased away from a life of sin and slavery to Satan by the blood of Christ. It is the victorious resurrection from the grave that Jesus has conquered all that Satan could do to us including this horrible thing which is called lockdown. Make no mistake about it. Disease and pestilence has been a part of our life in faith from the time of Christ till today. The church has endured difficult hours. Society has endured disease, death, pain, suffering, hunger, and the like. And Christ has never forsaken his people. Take heart and know this. As the disciples walked to Emmaus and their eyes were not yet open, Christ was with them. He walked with them. And then he fed them. What a glorious day it will be when we can return here to the parish and receive the body and blood of Christ 
for the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Take heart. Because just like the witnesses of the Old Testament, you too are witnesses today. Witnesses of God's provisions, witnesses of God's love, witnesses of God's protection, and witnesses of the risen Savior, Jesus, the Son of God. It is without fear, without trepidation, and much like the two disciples after the meal to the road, Emmaus, let your hearts burn knowing that the Holy Spirit dwells therein and that the promises of God are sure and true. Don't be like what the disciples said to Jesus. Are you just a visitor to Jerusalem? Do you not know what has occurred over the last seven to ten days? Have you not heard of this man, Jesus, the Son of God, who was crucified, died, buried, and now arisen? It is true. As we hear in the Acts lesson for today, the first reading. And what, by the way, it's one of my favorite when it comes to Peter. Notice what it says. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice. You can interpret that however you want. I take it as this. He got loud because he wanted them to know the importance of what was going on. Let the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him, this Jesus Christ, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. You, he was talking to those of Jerusalem, you crucified him, but he did not stay dead. He conquered sin, death, and all the chains of the devil so that you and I would have forgiveness and freedom in the gospel. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, be witnesses to the power of Jesus in your life. Be witnesses to the truth of what the Lord has promised to do and has done. Be witnesses to the truth that our Savior did not stay dead, but that he arose victoriously, gloriously, and powerfully by the promise fulfilled and by his love for you. In his great name and according to his great will, giving us the gift of forgiveness, we can say together with joy and certainty, Amen. May God the Father who gives us the great gift of his Son, may God the Son who gives us the great gift of his life in death, and may God the Holy Spirit continue to bless, guide, lead, and strengthen you, both now and forevermore. Amen.